Welcome to the Tuesday, November 29th, no, 19th, 2019 meeting. Would you rise and join me in saluting the flag? entertain a motion to approve the following expense warrant and a payroll warrant. The expense is for 11 19 for $146,107.68. And then a payroll warrant for 11 20 for $168,964.44. You have a motion to approve? Okay, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and now we also have two sets of um, selectmen's minutes from 11 8 19. I'd like a motion to yep. approve. You have a motion to I'll approve. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And now I have some acknowledgments of minutes and reports from other departments. Fire Department, October 2019. Uh, emergency Squad, October 2019. Grant Writer Report, 2019. Cultural Council Minutes, 10719. And CIP Minutes from 10819. You have a motion to acknowledge? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And we have some anniversaries on the fire department. Uh, we have Donna LaFleur, who's been on for uh, 28, 27 years. And we have Charles Edgett, who has been on for 18. And then um, EMT, we have Donna LaFleur, who's been with us for 43 years. She's the captain of the squad. And um, then we have Matthew Rodwick for 11 years and Michael Laird for two years. And I would like to thank them all for their the community service that they give to us and continue on with us for many more years yet to come. Yes, thank you. The Brookfield Ecumenical Food Pantry is accepting donations at the Merrick Public Library. Whenever the library is open, are at St. Mary's Church, 4 Howard Street. During distribution hours, Wednesday 9.30 to 11 a.m. and Saturday 9.30 to 11 a.m. A parking ban will be in effect in town from November 15th through April 1st, from the hours of 11 p.m. <coughs> to 6 a.m. There shall be no parking on any streets. Also, snow and ice removed from driveways, sidewalks, or private property shall not be plowed, shoveled, or blown across any public way, street, or roadway. Do you have anything you would like to add? To nope. Okay. Good. okay. We'll move to our <clears throat> our first thing on our agenda. It's you, a resignation. Well, do you want to do the well, cruiser discussion first? Do you want to do first? the cruiser? Yeah. Why don't we do the cruiser with Mike? Come on, so, Mike. Come on up. <clears throat> Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> um, well, I'm here to ask uh, permission to utilize the fleet uh, acquisition um, and repair account for the lease of two cruisers. Um, I understand that the town's financial situation, so I've also proposed mm -hmm. what it would cost for one lease. Um, what sort of information do you want from me right now? Um, I've sent you guys all emails about the, the state of the fleet. Um, it's my professional opinion that we should be operating with four line cars. Yeah. Um, right now we're down a cruiser, so we only have three line cars mm -hmm. right now. And that third line car has about 106,000 plus on it. And it's kind of on the way out. Yeah. I, normally I would go to the town meeting to ask for these. We didn't have the special in, in the fall, so I just, I can't wait until the annual um, 
in June to be allowed to purchase another mm -hmm. cruiser yeah. um, in, until July because I'll probably be down another cruiser. I don't know how long the one with 106,000 is going to last on it. So in order to get back up to speed, I would, I would like the, the two cruisers out of the lease account, um, which would cost um, let's see. It would cost uh, uh, for five years twenty thousand five seventy seven twenty five each year, um, and that first payment wouldn't be due until March, I believe. Um, if we do the option leasing one cruiser um, due to the you know the, the town's financial state, it would only be I don't want to say only it, it would be ten thousand two hundred eighty five dollars and thirty two cents for the five years. Mm -hmm. So I'm open to questions, comments, <coughs> anything. That needs explaining. Well, so, you had to have a new, did you say you had Yeah, I, I got the new, I got the new. Owned by the one you sent us. Yeah, that, that one was the original one, which is for the two, for the two, um, leasing two crews. This would be 20,000, 577, 25. Okay. But here is the lease for one. I don't know how many people want them. That's all right. The advisory, or the wanted one. I have a bunch, so I don't know. So I think that 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 is the question, Mike, as far as the inputs from both CFPC and and from advisory. Um, I think it would be appropriate at this time. No. Yeah. The CFPC or advisory. We have both recommended Jeff, could you speak a little louder, please? I'm sorry. Okay. Both committees, I, I believe mm -hmm. Stephen sent an email, I'm not sure, to, to recommending an incremental approach, doing the one lease and then see how we're, we're at. We can always come back for the second one. We're trying to be as conservative as possible in our recommendation. Mm -hmm. um, Is that what you were going to say, Tom? Yeah. Uh, I, 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 Dave? Uh, Mike, why are we going? Uh, is this the first time we've leased a, a police cruiser? And if so, why are we going on a lease rather than a purchase? This is the first time we're going on a lease. And the only reason why I'm proposing a lease this time is due to the fact that we didn't have the special town meeting in um, November or October. Um, the only funds I have access to to purchase a cruiser right now is this fleet acquisition account. Um, and there's not enough in there to outright purchase a cruiser. So that's why I'm doing the lease. How's that going to pan out after, would you say, five years? Five years. How's that going to pan out after, would you say, five years? Five years. How's that going to pan out after, would you say, five years? The cruiser won't last five years, will it? Uh, uh, hopefully it does. I've been kind of running these cruisers for five years. I mean, in these, these Tahoes, uh, again, we just purchased the Tahoe yeah. last year, and it, so it's kind of new. But Beth, you're on. The, the, feed, the feedback is, that they're lasting a lot longer and they're running up to two, New York State Police run them up to 250,000 miles. So, I mean, the longevity of the cruisers seems to be a little bit more, but again, it's, it's the first one I've had. It's only a year old, so I don't know that, but we try and maintain the cruisers as long as we can. I mean, and that's why I'm here kind of behind the eight ball. And after the five years, are we going to have It's to ours. It's ours. So we going to owe any money? Is it no. No, it's so ours. It's, no, it's not. Well, you, obviously, it's going to be a little bit more because you have the interest on it, but yeah, but it's ours. We, it's not like a, a, a personal loan, a uh, lease where you have to keep it within certain miles or you're writing a check to, Okay. Right. it's just ours. Okay, Laurie? So, or you buy it for a dollar or something, I forget. Laurie is first. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank okay. you. Chief, is there an option to buy up the lease early? I think, yes, yes. So if we wanted to, we could pay it off. Pay it off. Absolutely, okay. there's, no, there's no penalties or anything Perfect. for that. Okay. Peter? Peter. The uh, CIPC uh, had previously recommended against leasing vehicles, uh, but understands mm -hmm. the uh, the situation we're in. This is the only option. Mm -hmm. We had been on record in our capital plan draft of recommending two cruisers this year. With the situation we're in now, one lease with the provision of potential buyout seems mm -hmm. to us uh, a good option. We just point out that it isn't our role really to recommend what to buy or when mm -hmm. to buy or whether to lease. That's your job. Uh, but one of our questions was uh, if an accident should happen or 
uh, something uh, fails in the equipment, who pays for the repair, who pays for the replacement? On the lease? On the lease? Yeah. That's one I thing I did not. I'm pretty sure <laughs> that um, I, I, I we would believe pay it would be ours. Yeah, we'd pay I mean, for just it. like, but yeah. I don't know that for certain. Yeah. I believe that Tom Eastbrookfields uh, has been they leased all, all the time. All the time. Yes. Um, so we could probably get more information from their police okay. chief as well. Yeah. Mike, do we know how much is in the fleet acquisition account? There's thirty-four thousand. Yeah. Thirty-four. And they're right mm -hmm. now. Well, given that there wouldn't be enough in the fleet acquisition repair account, uh, replacement repair account, to, for the whole five years, I wonder how we manage that. It, the selectmen can only approve the lease one year at a time. Yeah, well, yes, two what years we. At a time, like yeah. three, almost yeah. three, three years at a time. I think that every, what we would do every year, we would appropriate money to put back in that account for the right. year. And if you, and now we're only going to go with one. Well, I, hmm? my professional opinion is I need the two cruises. Yeah. The property needs two mm -hmm. cruises, but I, I, I understand the financial situation yeah. of the town. Mm -hmm. and, and and like Peter said, if if, if we get one right now, mm -hmm. I mean, again, if you approve this tonight, it's going to be a month or two, mm -hmm. or even a little yeah. bit longer before the mm -hmm. before the cruiser arrives. So, you know, if I don't get the two right now. Um, I will be going back at the town meeting mm -hmm. and, and looking to get one on a warrant at the town True. meeting, depending on our financial situation. You know, I mean, I need the two cruisers. I know you. I understand but that. I also understand that we don't know the, yet. The, the issue that we're in. This is not something you necessarily need to answer tonight. But I don't see how we can approve a five-year lease, which is what the chief is asking, when we don't have enough money. In the fleet repair replacement account. Okay, Laura can answer that. So there's currently $34,000 in there. So the way that it could be done is you could tonight approve whether you purchase two, not purchase, I'm sorry, <laughs> lease. You could lease either two or one cruisers because there is enough money to cover year one of payments. Mm -hmm. Then what would be required is because we have consistently funded the fleet repair account mm -hmm. here. through mm -hmm. an article which is up to town yep. meeting to approve you would need to allocate money from the budget to fund this um, that way it's guaranteed that there is enough so we would need to take the cost of the lease whether it was one or two for the next year put enough money in to cover that one year's payment and then continue to do that in the next Four years. Or, or, or an annual, just pay it off. Just, or just pay it off. I'll just pay it off. Or just pay the whole yeah. thing off. Or we could, when we have the audit, we can roll, um, we could pay it off, or we could take out like a long term loan, uh, not really a long term loan. Sure. We can just finance the rest of it ourselves okay. and get out of the so there's several options. There are several. So, so, so probably the prudent thing to do would be to go ahead and move forward with one vehicle. I feel the same way. And, and see how it goes, see kind of get the practice in place to see what we're doing, what and the then, costs you know, are. We'll, and we'll then get in touch with East Brookfield and find out, you know, who's who takes care of, you know, all of the repairs and things on Yeah, I, I, I would, you know, almost guarantee that's got to that's come out of my budget just yeah, as, I think as, it, as anything you know, would. Will you have you money know. in your budget to take care of that needs Yeah, we always, we, I forget how much we put in, but we almost 10,000 a year for, for, okay. for maintenance of cruisers, maintenance and repair of cruisers. Mm -hmm. um, so okay. I'd offer a, a motion to move forward with the lease of, a, of one vehicle based on the information I, to, I tonight. Sec I second that motion. And any more discussion from anybody on it? I just have one question. What? Uh, what, if, if we're gonna, if we're releasing it, we're paying a monthly payment on it, we're paying for it, it's, not a, it's not a monthly payment. It's a yearly payment. It's, yeah, it, I think the, 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 the 10,000, 395 92 will be due every every March and that invoice would go to them what the difference is between using and buying the the pretty much the same right is that where we get well I mean you have an interest rate of 4.17 percent you know so instead of paying the cruise is going to cost forty seven thousand dollars instead of paying that right now you're going to pay the forty seven thousand over you know over five years plus the, the, the interest okay. so you, you're paying a little bit but that's the only option I could come well, up with like to solve the problem 
Yes, yes, yeah. yes. It's totally different than yes. where you have to return it, and you know you can only drive certain miles. So you, that none of that exists in, in the municipality world right. for this. So, but yeah, it's just buying it. It's like now, a loan. Now, if we, you know, Peter was saying we obviously can't say we're going to do a five-year lease, but if we sign up and sign up for a five-year lease, is this something that if I just want to make sure that it's not something that like. I don't think that they would, but what if, what if the town voted against the lease? Then we'd be stuck, right? Because you signed the five-year lease and only paid for the beginning. Of it. Well, the town's not really voting on no. renewing the lease or not. The town's voting on funding it. Funding it. You know? Right. Um, I mean, I hope they wouldn't, obviously, but I'm saying, what if I'm screwed with that? But I'm sure we could sure figure it out. At right, worst case scenario, I assume you just return okay. the cruise ride. Right. Laurie's going to weigh That's in on That's why we need to fund the lease payment into the budget as part of the budget rather than funding the fleet yeah. repair mm -hmm. as an article that the town gets to vote on. We would fund the fleet repair as part of our operating budget. So it's still something the town vote on. Right. Well, the town votes on the overall budget, but that way we guarantee that we can say within the, the levy of the taxes collected and yeah. the revenues of the town, we're going to fund $10,000 as part of our operating budget. Or alternatively, by the cruiser. Exactly. Yes, for the cruiser. Yes. Okay, so all in favor of um, leasing the, a new cruiser? Aye. Um, aye. Aye. Yes, sir. Thank you, Beth. Aye. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. All right, well, thank you for your time okay. and listening. That's not mine. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Our next one is, um, is a resignation that we take with regret. Um, on Mon It was given to us Monday, November 18, 2019. To the Honorable Board of Selectmen, it is with a heavy heart that I must resign from Treasurer. It has been a long road with recent changes in certain departments. It has made the position fun and exciting. A lot has been accomplished. I appreciate the opportunity to serve as treasurer. For, I, I was given the opportunity to serve as treasurer for the town of Brookfield. My last day of work will be November 21st, 2019. Thank you and God bless. Lenny Crustacea. Uh, motion to Mo accept the registration. Mo motion to accept. Okay, and we. Um, Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, Aye. we wish her well in all her future endeavors. And Karen, if you'd like to get a letter ready so we can send that out to her. So if we want to discuss a little bit about that now. Now the plan. Now yeah. we need a plan. Okay, we have a plan. I've been. I got a plan already in place. <laughs> I have talked. Laurie had given me. Then we first we called Pioneer Valley to see if there was another um, service like uh, that they they could recommend like we have with Laurie's firm, and he told he said that we they didn't have anything in place, and so I talked to Laurie and she told us about Sarah Hunter, and she has a small firm and right now she's in the town of uh, West Brookfield and where else is she Montague? Uh, uh, Blanford. Blanford. Yep. Um, Monterey. Monterey. Yeah, she's in quite a few she towns up in the western state. And I have discussed this with her, and Laurie's talked to her, and she does have time to fit us in. And so um, she's, she's highly recommended by Eric Kershev and also by the other Eric, Eric Weiss. And um, so she's coming down on Friday morning, and Laurie and myself, and Holly, are, we're meeting with her, and she's going to see just what needs to be done here in Brookfield for now. And she will come up with a price, and then the selectmen will have a meeting and discuss that and probably sign a contract with her. And we'll probably, you know, go through till we can get the audit, and then we'll see after the audit what's going to happen. And she, she knows, um, she just worked with Mr. Scanlon on one of her other towns that hadn't been, um, they didn't have an audit for five years. And so she said that she's pretty sure that she can get him to come down here. And I guess she has a couple of girls that work with her. And she said for, probably for a start, two of them would be down here for a while. So that's the plan right as of now. And I'm so, sure so I, given, and do you agree with this? So given the timeline yep. that we had established, I'm sure December has fallen out yep. as far as FY19. So what I would propose is in, in your discussions and deliberations mm -hmm. with, uh, with Ms. Hunter that, that in fact we get a timeline as far as what needs to be done and I would appreciate understanding what that, that 
cycle is but i would what i would be looking to do or thinking about is that we have 60 days for for fy19 that's what the timeline should should be unless there's other inputs once people take a look at things so that we have 19 so that we can move forward with the audit in february okay do we have an update on the status from when we were two weeks ago as far as the progress that we made up until Dee Dee, could you give something on that? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know whether an email was sent this afternoon or not. I didn't get one. You didn't get one. Okay. Um, right now, July, August, and September are, I think July is done, August is done, except for um, gains and losses on the Bartholomew accounts, and September is close to being done. That was as of this afternoon. Um, and as you well know, Thursday is her last day, and I'm assuming at that point that it would be my last day. And I just wanted to thank the board mm -hmm. and the finance committee and everybody else who welcomed me into the community. Um, my disappointment at this point is that during the tenure, we've been unable to complete the project. Um, however, that being said, I've observed a lot that I would like to share with the board if the board would so entertain that. Sure. Um, as a board, you have to guide the employees in the direction that you want them to go into. And the lack of working together, the lack of communication is only one of the pitfalls that I've observed. Employees do not need to like one another. They don't need to be friends mm -hmm. with one another, but they do need to have that common goal to um, achieve a certain thing. They have to respect one another. Um, they have to be cordial to one another and professional. And in these ways, they will accomplish what they want efficiently mm -hmm. and correctly. Um, the fiscal responsibility is everyone's goal in this town hall. Um, and one of the most important parts of the treasurer's office is to balance the agency um, accounts with payroll. Um, you had a difference of $70,000 uh, in the insurance budgets last year, and I'm fearful that that will happen again this year, yet there's still no guidelines for the payroll clerk to professionally do her job proficiently also. Um, it's in my opinion that the board has some important and very difficult decisions uh, to be made if they want to continue as they have in the past or move forward in a positive direction and a common goal to benefit all of the people mm -hmm. in Brookfield. Brookfield's a wonderful, wonderful community um, and it's got wonderful people, but I think everybody needs to pull together to get this done. And it can be accomplished. There's no mm -hmm. doubt about it. I think Laurie's done a great job of, you know, getting things in order, but it still needs, it needs somebody in that office, I would say five days a week, and someone who does the daily operations. Um, just today I looked at a very small portion of the life insurance, which is a small bill that you have. And there is a retiring from the school that's on it at a, as a regular employee, and still your treasurer, your accountant, who resigned in April, I believe, is still on that. Um, and these are this is that lack of communication between the departments. Um, one department doesn't know when someone else has resigned or someone has come on from the school department. So there needs to be a much clearer um, point of communication, which I think can be done if, if you had a meeting maybe every week or every two weeks to, to pull these issues together. Well, I've tried to have a monthly meeting. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying a financial meeting, Linda. I'm you, saying you, a staff meeting. A staff meeting. Yeah. The department we, heads to, you know. We were having those 
about a year or so ago, I guess, and we were going over the um, all the different policies and things. Well, and, and I think staff meeting is one thing. Yeah. This, the second piece, and um, back to when you began yeah. that process, mm -hmm. we kind of fell out of yeah. uh, sync as far as the updating of the procedures because the procedures mm -hmm. need work. The last I knew, Lori had yeah, her piece and her responsibility, yeah. but I think with what your input is tonight, we need that additional input to go into the treasurer section of that document so that it is clear that when, when the, the different things are due and if there's, if there's a, a, something that needs to be done with payroll, that it be in the document so it's clear as to process. Well, I think when you have the school department and their hiring and everything else, that gets into the payroll clerk but she does not necessarily see the UNAM bills or bills that come through because they're automatically paid through your payroll department. So without that communication from the school to the payroll clerk and the payroll clerk on through, it doesn't happen. And, and back to the heads up that needs to be on a document somewhere. Yeah. It, that that's just one of the one of the items that needs to be worked yeah. upon so yeah. what what I would offer yeah. is that you've moved more to a staff meeting kind of environment mm -hmm. I would welcome the opportunity if, if it were to be agreed to circle back to the financial policy document mm -hmm. such that in 60 days from today it be the latest document so that going into the audit this is what we're working towards this is how we're working and that if there are changes to be made we document it as part of the management letter from the uh, from the uh, auditor and and i know that he will have a management letter coming down uh, and when we do have the management letter we have to pull in all of the department heads and we have to explain to them you know just what they have to do to change and we'll check back with them to make sure these changes have been made because this is what we used to do years ago but it has to be part of the policy and yeah. working documents yeah. such mm -hmm. that there are work instructions yeah. that are clear to make sure that there are things that are not missed Laura? if i can add something to what he just said so in the end um you do have an assistant treasurer and you yeah. have a treasurer. I was the one who found the issues with your health insurance. However, your treasurer should have been the one that found the issues with all of them. Mm -hmm. So to say that you have a payroll clerk that is not finding these things, your payroll clerk notified people of issues with the retirement multiple mm -hmm. weeks ago. So payroll clerk is overseen, and she's being called a payroll clerk. She is your assistant treasurer. She is overseen by the treasurer. The treasurer oversees all functions in that office. So to be on our last days here and to start saying that this person is not doing their job, I, I find to be absurd. Yeah, yeah I, I honestly was not meaning she's not doing her job. I'm meaning that there isn't one. She, the, the communication between the two is not, when the bills come in, no one is aware, as a treasurer, she's not aware of who is hired by the school, who has left and retired by the school, who is still on a health insurance or on a life insurance. So, so Madam Chair, back to my offer to get back to the financial yeah. policy. If there is a practice that needs to be clarified, and, and I, I would certainly take that as one of the first things that I would work to, to look into the policy to make sure, policy document to work with Holly to be able to understand what needs to be said such that we don't end up uh, with an issue in I the think, future on that particular I think subject. that got kind of put to the wayside because that's how it used to be. A new hire would come in and automatically they would go in and see the treasurer. Yeah, we do. We get, yeah, yeah. the so, school does. So, again, not to continue. Well, oh, we've got an advisory input. Jeff. Sorry, I, I respectfully, too, I want to back up big picture. Two things. One, um, I would respectfully ask if, if Dee Dee, if you could present a written as part of your scope of services, which you originally hired. I mean, I haven't seen the contract, but I assume you had something that you were, you know, like some sort of a scope. 
if you could put it down in writing, whatever it is, your recommendations and or your observations, uh, I think that would be an excellent idea. Uh, secondly, when the um, Sarah and the, 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 this person comes from the other West Brookville or whatever, part of the scope of services should be perhaps to bring her knowledge and experience, maybe a sample fiscal policies, procedures, of treasury mm -hmm. oh. function, the do's and don'ts. So that we can I will, else. we will, Jeff, but we'll in, discuss in all of that when she's here. It's written down and someone can be held accountable yeah. for all of this mm -hmm. because that's, I think, where we, again, I'm not, I don't want to talk about the past, but I think yeah. if everything's written down, everyone's held accountable, everything's transparent, then we'll have no yeah. problems in the future yeah, sure. because at least we'll know where we are. The whole work plan and things will be moving ahead in the right direction. Things but, like I had said, things were like that before, but it just got down, it just fell to the wayside, and I want that to happen again. We, uh, all these procedures are right up to par. So the other, the other thing that the document could use is a, a, a map of times and timetables mm -hmm. of when things are due, yeah. just as kind of reminders to people. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, yeah. and it needs to be okay. kind of just dusted off and, and updated. Okay. So one thing we might want to consider instead of trying to get the whole thing done all at once is to identify certain processes like this that might touch on a multiple department to yeah. get those published discreetly until we get the full manual out. No, no, I, Beth, we can, you're, you're ha hard to hear, it's it's back to doing a piece at a time. Yeah. I, I think that that's the translation. Mm -hmm. you're, you're hard to come across, Beth, from your phone. Yes, that's, that's exactly right. You may need to just publish this a piece at a time to address some of these shortfalls. Exactly. Right. I'm just thinking, too, from a budgetary standpoint, so that as long as it, it, it's on a... It's in the scope of services, you know, mm -hmm. this provision of a manual yeah. or whatever else will cost X and man hours or whatever, so at least we know, so we don't have to just keep adding mm -hmm. on yeah. this without yeah. knowing. We understand that. Yeah, okay. So I should be able to have the, my revisions, which I, I'm assuming are the final ones, because mm -hmm. it looks like it has yes. gone through everyone else. Yes. I should have them to Karen within the next, okay. I'd say, with Thanksgiving and everything, the next three weeks. Okay. So with that, once you're with that i'm going to go grab it again and yeah. i'm going to circle with everyone yes. and the, the one thing that we were going to do once you finished with that is we were going to have a sign we had a signature page added so what we want to do is have be again before the audit is everyone's going to sign off that in fact what is in that document is what we're working towards so with that Okay, with that, we'll move Lori, on. Lori. Madam Chairman, may I ask a question? Go on. You said that this treasurer uh, from West Brookfield. You said she's not from West Brookfield. She has a firm. She's, work, I know, she works, she's, she's working, working in West Brookfield right. and some other communities. Right, hmm. I understand that. But you said if, she, if she's going to be able to fit us in, I think we're at a stage of this town that we actually need to hire a, a treasurer that has municipal experience right away. Well, that's what she is, Dave. She has the municipal. Maybe Laurie can add on because she's, she's worked with us, her before. She's going to give us enough time. I'm sure she will. When yeah. I talked to her today, she said that she will pro she'll give us more time. And she said it'll probably be two of them working in the office for a while to straighten things out. Laurie, do you want to add the... Sure. So, um, Sarah Hunter owns um, a treasurer consulting right. firm. Right. She is the owner. She has two employees of her own. Um, she consults herself as well as her employees in two towns the same way that my boss consults his employees as well as himself in the towns. Um, she does outsource as well as interim. Um, so she'll go into towns that want to just, like you guys did with me, um, just hire an outside company to perform your services. Um, from what I'm understanding right now from talking to Linda and speaking with Sarah, um, this would be kind of on an interim basis until a decision was made and everything was cleaned up. Um, mm -hmm. She would come in, help get everything cleaned up, everything up and running, and then the decision could be made whether or not you wanted to hire someone or you wanted to continue on with her services and do like a yearly contract, which is what we have with the company that I work for. Um, she sets certain days, <coughs> similar to what I do, you would be getting 
guarantee that she's here a certain day or day is the week, so you would always know when the pressure was here. She would also let you know when she was going to put staff members here. Um, she is low, she does live locally, um, so there's always the opportunity to have her in additional hours, which is the same as what I've been doing. Um, so she doesn't spread herself thin, but she knows exactly what she's able to take on. So, and, and to, to fill in that point, that there were at least two other resources that were available if the meeting were to go south and it would be yes. not possible to yes. do what needs to be done in the next 60 or so days, yes. that there are additional resources that are available. Again, no, knowledge to the advisory board for their input as far as contacts and the like. Yeah. Laurie and, had given me another thing right, also. Right. So, so with that, I think what we do is you, you have your meeting, yeah. you see where we are, mm -hmm. and we get on the on the track. If we're not on the track, I would suggest that we have a, a meeting of this board mm -hmm. very within the 48 hours oh, sure. or whatever we have to go to plan B. Yeah, because I want to. I will schedule a meeting right after we see her, and she comes up, you know, with the, what, yeah. what she's going to do and um, her terms, and you know what, uh, how much it'll cost us, and so I will schedule a meeting for some morning. Yep. So we can get together on this probably next week. Steve. Uh, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Friday after meeting is this. What, what do you intend to do first? Like meet amongst yourself, make a decision, or, or in other words. When when you when can we have finalized information? From you? Well, we're going to meet. What are you meeting? We're meeting. Office? We are meeting on um, Friday. Like yep. I said, it's going to be Laurie, the town accountant, uh, Holly, who is our assistant treasurer, and myself. You. Because right. if we have say another selectman, then it has to be a posted meeting. Got so it. just four of us are going to meet, and we're going to. I think Laurie has been in contact with her her already, and she told her you know different things that are going on here in the town, and she's aware of them. And she said she doesn't have any problem. She know she's right up front, and she said she can help us out and get us back running on the right track. And then so so what that's saying yeah. is that you'll have a meeting yeah. on Friday, yeah. that on Monday morning right. that we have a, an update yeah. as to where we are yeah. with the different alternatives, mm -hmm. yeah. and then given those al alternatives. Okay. We, we will move forward. So, I mean, I, I think that that's the timing yeah, that that's we're the talking. Timing. Yeah. And again, my, my point is that 60 days from Monday, or roughly 60 days, that we in fact have FY19 in a box so that we can move forward with the Department of Revenue and FY19, the other. Correct. FY19. It's FY19. And then she'll probably, we can even have her even start on FY20 also to get that caught up to date. Well, I think. Agreed, Laura? When I spoke to her yesterday afternoon, yeah. um, so we, I worked with her and did this in Blanford, which is the town she was referring to with the town that hadn't been on mm -hmm. in five years. Um, we did this in Blanford. Um, we concurrently did prior year while we caught up on the current mm -hmm. year. Um, in or, we did it over a six month time uh -huh. ago. In order to do this in 60 days, we'd have to let fiscal year 20 just go and then catch up on fiscal year 19 and then quickly try to catch up on fiscal year 20. Well, and I think the other point that I would like to make is the assistant treasurer has certain capabilities and we'd like to see what additional resource yeah. that we have there and, and ban what bandwidth we might have. That would be to suggest that maybe she forgo the hours that she has in the water department, maybe have somebody back her up there. But, it, but I think you have a, re, a trained resource yes. that we want to make sure we take full <laughs> advantage of. I, I feel I agree with you 100%. So, so does it make sense then, or, oh. or are, are you able Rich, to? Dick, Rich, Richard, they're in here. Oh, sorry. They're hiding. Uh, would you be comfortable with committing to the, the next Board of Selectmen meeting is what, the third? Of December? The, yes, it is. The, the third. third, yes. The third of December. Would you be comfortable with having as part of your agenda sort of a, um, uh, uh, you know, a summary of this, you know, where we're at, state of state? Absolutely. <laughs> you know, I'm sure. um, this topic's not going to leave number yeah, one. No, it's not. No. But, you know, with, with, with deadlines, all milestones, you know, just, just yeah. that sort of stuff. So yeah, we'll we're, talk. We'll, we're we'll discuss all, all of that with her. This doesn't go away. No, it's and not I know going you away. Know that. No. 
I've been working on this, Steve, since April when our other one left. So uh, I've and, been putting in a lot of time on it, so I know what the deadlines are. Well, we're, we're all being diligent. So, <laughs> so if, if we can commit to Tuesday the 3rd as far as uh, the next, next up bit. Yeah, but polls, we'll, okay. you, know, um, um, you know, discussion on this, that sure. would be great. Okay, that's what we'll do. We'll plan it on the 3rd, okay. and we'll have more information by then. Yeah. And that's all I can tell you right now until we talk to Sarah on Friday. Good. Okay. Item number four. I have a process question. Steve? Um, on, the, on, the, on the assumption that your, your meeting on Friday with the uh, consultant candidate goes swimmingly, and everyone says, yes, it can be done, the price is right, everything's good. It's like, what do we need to do to close the deal? Does there need to be a Board of Selectmen's meeting? Yeah, that's what I just said that earlier. We okay. would have one, a Board of Selectmen's meeting Monday. to Monday. Um, Monday morning. Monday, okay. if, we ha if we have everything from her, we'll have it on Monday. Okay, so we, there is a, we have a chance of having an interim treasurer in place by the consultancy. Um, next week. The, next week. Next week. Yes. It's like, it's like no, I'm not asking you to guarantee yeah. it. We can't predict what's going to happen. We, but I, just want, I just want to understand, are we not going to be able to, I, I was concerned that we would not be able to move forward and execute on this until the meeting on December no. 3rd. Okay, no, no, we're gonna, no okay. we're, we will meet on that. We'll probably meet Monday morning. So Karen. I need to have 48 hours notice. Karen needs phone, 48 so hours. So we can't do it on Friday because be business. Oh, no, 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 so no. We'll you're, be you're having your meeting. Yeah. The meeting that would happen is that we would then have the information from the Friday meeting mm -hmm. such that we can vote on it on Monday. That's what I'm saying. I have, but I, but that's not, not 48 have hours. Until Friday. I can't post a board of You can post a meeting Friday. today. Yeah. Pro, you know, all right, okay. All right, post, post it, it anyway. today. Okay. Post it today. All right. Or Monday, tomorrow. Probably yeah, we'll Monday okay. at uh, 10. That okay. sounds good. Monday at 10 o'clock. Is that good with you? Beth, that was 10 o'clock on Monday. <laughs> Any chance of doing it earlier? About nine. Do you like nine? Uh, any, time, any time after eight o'clock. Oh, that's kind of early, eight o'clock. <laughs> I'm out of bed. I'm out of bed, but I mean, <laughs> how about 8.30? 8, 8.30 8 is the deal. That works. Thanks, right. Beth. Thanks. Okay. okay. All right, so we'll meet at 8.30 on Monday morning in the selection's office. Up. And I'm hoping, hopefully, we'll have all of our information from her. Very good. Okay, so that sounds good. Up, oh, Peter. I just want to say I, I really appreciate how quickly you uh, moved from uh, having a resignation to having a plan um, mm -hmm. moving forward. And I especially want to thank Lori for her firm's assistance, her personal assistance mm -hmm. to uh, bring the mayor on the decision. So, uh, I really appreciate how quickly this is moving yeah. given the circumstances. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. We'll move on now to Laurie with the financial update. So fiscal year 18 schedule A is done and submitted. We finished it. Thank you. <laughs> we finished it last week and submitted it to the DOR on the 14th. Um, we have not heard back yet. Um, on a normal Schedule A submittal, they take about they typically take about seven days. Um, with this one, we're expecting maybe a little bit longer than seven days because it is a prior fiscal year. Um, they may not look at it right away. They may push us off and look at everybody else's current year Schedule A's first, and then come back around and look at ours. Um, but regardless, it is submitted, and that's all that really counts at this point. Um, we did go ahead and use the accountant's general ledger cash um, only. I printed one if anyone ever wanted to actually look at it. It's 21 pages long for anyone's viewing pleasure. Um, as far as fiscal year 19, um, unfortunately my update does not coincide with the treasurer's office. We have not balanced anything. Um, so there's no cash has been balanced for fiscal year 19. Um, I met with them today. I looked mm -hmm. at July. Um, their cash book does not work the way a cash book should. It doesn't match. The problem we're having is that they did not do a cash book for fiscal year 18, which is the reason we didn't use their cash in our Schedule A. Um, so we're lacking in some issues there. 
Um, I'm sorry. Chef, why don't, sorry. why don't we let her finish before we have questions? Um, so midway through working on it, um, it, it just, at my point, it seemed useless. I know that she was resigning in two days, um, so there was no reason to continue on with July. So we are fully back to the beginning of fiscal year 19, so that's where we are. Um, other than that, I am ready to, so after you submit the Schedule A, balance sheet, everything, you need to fully close up a year. Um, the issue I had with the way your prior accountant did the books is she didn't designate what in your chart of accounts was an article and what wasn't. Um, so I've been going through, I spent all day Friday figuring out what in your accounts were articles that were voted, what were budgets, um, what were considered encumbrances. So I think I've nailed down everything. I've contacted the highway department, um, miscellaneous other departments and said, hey, you have $11,000 left in this weird old article from 2009. Did you really want it? Um, are you gonna spend the money? I've gotten responses back from everybody um, that I contacted. So um, tomorrow I'm going to fully close up fiscal year 18, move it into 19. And now that I've done all that work, I have it all for fiscal year 19. Mm -hmm. So you only have to do it really once. Um, I'm going to rename um, all of the articles. So you'll see it when I send out, because I think everyone here gets my expenditure report. Mm -hmm. You'll see I typically number them differently because I'm not going to renumber them. I am going to suggest that the beginning of fiscal year 21, we do a new chart. Um, which is just renumbering, and it'll give you three digits. Instead of the three digits you have at the end, we'll give you four. I'm just gonna rename everything, so that way it's very clear where everything came from. Um, some of them I've already done. I'm gonna finish that process now that I found out where everything came from. So I'm gonna close up 18, move it into 19, and then I've already started working on my close of year 19 reports mm -hmm. that don't require the cash. Um, the issues we still have is obviously the 19 cash. Um, we have an issue with um, the tax title foreclosure that the treasurer's office has no record of, um, which is an issue. Um, we've made no progress over the last two weeks since I was here last. Um, I don't see any progress being made in the next two days, so until someone else, most likely Sarah, starts, um, we will accomplish nothing. So I hope on I can. On specific to tax title. On tax title or cash, okay. yes. Um, so I'm hoping we can make it in the 60 days. Mm -hmm. That's that's really preferable. That's, 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 that's the target. A really, yeah. That is <laughs> the target. That's a really tough, that's, that's a hard we're, number we're to work in, with. We're, we're into ne negotiation. Because we are a full year behind, and honestly, she's gonna someone new is gonna come in and look at the cash book that the treasurer's office has worked with and say, I have to start over. Sure, and, and so given, given that situation, what we have is a, a town meeting in June that we have to be prepared for. Yes, we have to have a management letter in our hands in time to go to that annual meeting to say, This is what we need to do differently. Mm -hmm. So, again, that, that's if I'm if, if there's pressure in 60 days, it's if it's not 60 days, what is it? Yeah. I would defer to looking at right. it with. You gotta have your meeting tomorrow or Friday. Right. right. So we'll, we'll, yeah. We're gonna look at it together. I went over it with her briefly on the phone yesterday and gave her just a quick overview of where we are. Um, there is a way that she can do it a lot quicker because she has a lot of knowledge and has done this multiple times. Um, she won't need to use the full Excel cash book. Mm -hmm. She has other ways that she can do this in her own computer program. Um, so I'm hoping that she can fly right through this. Um, once, it, And that's the thing, I'm really waiting on the treasurer's office. Okay. My portion of cash doesn't take long. So we'll know more after we talk right. to yes. her on Friday. Excellent. Hmm. Excuse me, Laura, you said something about tax time. Should you make the the tax foreclosure. foreclosure. Yep. Yep, the tax mm -hmm. foreclosure yeah. account. Other than that, everything seems to be going smoothly okay. um, in terms of the finances. Thank you. Uh, not on that first question, because I think the answer would be to submit the three months that we submitted or whatever, but yeah, has someone been in touch with the, the Department of Revenue? So if we do miss that, that was sort of the, the one that everyone was concerned about. And now that we're having another shift, will that affect our 
So the fiscal year 19. State 19 is um, is technically not even June yet. Was that, that was the December 30th of this year? That so was the, our target. That was the target. Then. So it is, that is, and that is when it's due. Um, there is a real gray area of, they don't really start looking for you until March. Um, oh, so, right. so there is a little bit of yes. which I wasn't sure So that. we would obviously, we would contact them this time because we weren't involved when you went way late the first time. We would notify them if we were gonna be late, which we will miss the first deadline, probably the December. Mm -hmm. We will notify them and let them know we are working yeah. on it, we are late, but, but here's yeah. where we are. But now knowing March, thank you. You may have you may have a little room on it's, the sixty days. It's it's really but not a, by yeah. Much. yeah, that's really when well, they start looking for you because that's when they start yeah. looking at cherry sheets. Well, and that's that's how I found out we hadn't submitted it the exactly. last year. I got a I got a letter from uh, yes, you did Department yes. of Revenue, and I went in immediately and talked to her and just right. oh, I'm working on it with Justin. That's what she told me. Yes, <laughs> didn't work. Okay. Peter has a question. Yes, Peter. Um, what will your say? So when they look at your Schedule A, they, when you do a Schedule A and you finalize it in the, the Department of Revenue's gateway system, you finish the 12-part form and as soon as you finish it, before you're able to submit, you go on to what's called the user review and it automatically generates a list of what they call questions and comments. Before you can actually submit the form, you have to put a comment into every one of their questions. Most of the questions are automatically generated based on an overage in what they call an acceptable percentage. Most of them are just, you collected more in revenue this year than you did last year and you increased your percentage over their acceptable amount. So that's all you put for your comment. Um, others you have to look into, but you put a comment into everything. Generally, after they've reviewed all your comments, they either just non-approve or they approve. I've never had one come back non-approved. Um, what they do is they go through all your comments, they read through everything, they match up your numbers on your cash, which is your KAR1, they match up your cash amounts, your equity amounts, and they make sure they match your balance sheet. We included a section and let them know there was no balance sheet submittal, which they already were aware of, so they were expecting this. So we added um, that separate section to let them know these are our fiscal year 18 numbers. So we shouldn't have an issue. I'm just assuming that it's gonna take a bit longer for an approval. Um, but all they're really doing is approving our numbers that say this is what we spent in fiscal year 18. We spent this, we collected this, and this is the full action of the town. And following that, if I'm a department head, I really only know the state of my accounts through fiscal year 18 at that point. <coughs> so it, as a department head, um, I send out an expenditure report every other week after I process the warrant. So you know your budgetary accounts, so everything that's in the operating budget, you see on the expenditure report. As far as any other accounts, which would be revolving accounts, grant accounts, um, anything other than what's in the operating budget, I have not been passing out. And I haven't been doing that because the beginning balances, which would have been whatever was remaining in your account from fiscal year 18, has to, be <coughs> has to be manually carried over from fiscal year 18 into fiscal year 19, and that was never done because the year wasn't closed. When I do that tomorrow, now the money is essentially mm -hmm. stuck in fiscal year 19. So when you look at the accounts, if I was to send one out tomorrow, all you would see for fiscal year 20 would be any money that you've turned over in fiscal year 20 and then all the money you spent. So it may look like that your account is deficit, but you may have left a balance in fiscal year 19 that just hasn't been moved yet. So I have had questions of people asking me, I don't mind manually calculating it for you. Um, I check all the grants. The same thing goes with town meeting articles. Those all look like they started with a balance of zero when in fact they were actually just articles from last year. So they're showing up on the expenditure report as a beginning balance of zero. Um, so it looks like they're negative for this year, but the amount is sitting in last year. So once I'm able to carry everything forward, the accounts will be
correct. Okay. And finally, um, the question of who do we have to be our auditor on February 1st? We're, uh, we're hoping that we will have Tom Scanlon because uh, <coughs> Sarah has worked with him, and so she will talk to him about coming down. So generally, we use Tom Scanlon yeah. for everything. Mm -hmm. um, he's preferred in this area. Um, I use him for all the towns that I work in. Um, we have a good track record with him. Um, so he, he would be who we'd recommend. And he's, and he's the one that we have been using. I, I understand, but he has uh, some, initially, did I understand correctly that he said he did not? His only concern was that the last time he was here was in fiscal year 13. Mm -hmm. Um, and that no audit had been completed since the last time he was here. However, we had the same issue um, in doing Blanford, and he was willing to come back after we completed and closed the two fiscal years that we said we would. So you're optimist. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Laura, do you know how much money is possibly carried forward from FY18? No. Tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. She'll have that answer. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so we're going to move on if there isn't any more questions. Let's go. Okay. Our next, our next item agenda is to approve the CMRPC invoice with changes orders. And that's down there with the Poppy Eye construction on Hayden Avenue. Yep. It's change order for the final paving is $15,984. And another change in the order was work outside of the original project plan, and that is $2,182. And I would like a motion so that we can... Motion to approve. And motion again, this is all part of this... This, yeah, this, CBDG this is all grant. part of the CBG grant. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Can I say how uh, terrific the project has been yeah. from the neighborhood's perspective? That's good. That's great. What, what is CMR? What's it mean? Central Mass Regional Planning. Got it. Thank you. They are managing our CBDG efforts. And what does that mean? Community Development Grant. Got it. Okay, that's that. Okay, Something we can go after every two years. Well, worth going after it this last time. Get to sign? There's about three of them that I don't sign. I think there's two of them that both of you need to sign. The other ones I think you both have to share sign. <coughs> yeah. I will do that as yeah. soon as you say something. Okay. So, uh, did you need to sign that? Oh, yeah, I skipped. Just you. Yeah, but there's two of them though in there that you have to sign. You missed this one. And this one too, my goodness. That's why you have me here. I know. <laughs> You're my wingman. <laughs> I'm sure that I can get stuff together now. Yeah, so I'm that sure. one's a signal. No, that's in that one. No, there's two here. Oh, that one. There are two. <laughs> Nope, you got that one, you got that one. No, nope, they're all just yeah. single. Here, oh, one. There, there's yeah. one. We there's needed. one. Ah, you hit him over there. All right. Beth, I figured it out. There we go. 
Takes a while. Getting old. Ooh, fun to try that one again. Ooh, I miss that one too. We're all getting old. <laughs> Before your eyes. All right. These tabs are not easy. No, they're not. <laughs> All right, Beth, your turn. All right. It's everything to the left. Yeah, that's probably the smarter idea. Just use several lines. Yeah. It's today the 19th. Yes. There's one. Okay. Now, number five is to sign a CDB extension for FY18 CDF. This, this is the housing rehab program requires more than complete. Um, it was 25,000 to 35,000 is expected to be left over and we need more time to evaluate options for the funds. So this right. is why we have to vote on this. Because we don't want to give away $25,000. Yeah. Okay. And the chairman is the only one that signs it, so I'd like a motion that I Motion that the chairman should sign. Second. Should sign. All in favor? Aye. 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 As long as we get the money. So that, just for clarification, that's the program where where individual residents can apply mm -hmm. for for yes. in essence zero interest loans. Yeah, as long as you keep the as property. long as you keep the property for 15 years, then you don't owe anything back. Right. And did we put the link for that program up on the website? Uh, I believe it is. I'll double check. I know we did just recently. Yeah, because we just. Uh, for the modification program, because we but just I believe that our, the link was already up there, that it was put up by um, Andrew Law. Yeah. I'll double check and make and sure. And we we there. just um, signed one a couple of weeks ago for something. Right. Okay, now the next one here is for um, the C CMRPC invoice and amendment for Leonard Engineering, and this is an invoice of uh, five thousand four hundred sixty-three dollars and twelve cents. That was for Hayden Avenue, and then there's an amendment with an increase of eight thousand, and that is paid from the 2018 CBG grant. Using the money, motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. And motion to have the chair sign. So I'll go for it. All in favor? Aye. 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 This one we all signed. Mm. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. Is there another one? Yeah, I can sign that one. Too. Okay, good. Mm. I'll keep my fingers there. All right, so then we'll go over here. Okay, this is another one. Um, it's Sabor it's a sign of Saborian Agreement Correction for CMRPC. Uh, this is to correct the signing authority of the grantor and I have to sign where all the yellow tabs are and sign where the red is. So I'd like permission to do that. You want to look at this app? Um, I want to make the motion in a second. I would just yeah, like to read through the document. Motion to sign. I'll second it, but uh, for discussion, I'd like to just 
read through that real quick. I didn't get a chance to see. Oh, it before. sure. Oh, this is oh, this is one that goes back to yes, I guess was October back when, October eighteenth, nineteen ninety nine. Oh my gosh. That's that's how far this. I believe that has to be notarized, which I'll do when I get back to the office. Okay. Yeah, you have to put that in the town. Okay. So let's see. I'll sign it down here. I think if you look at where the tabs are, I think they just want you to sign in no real line to sign. Oh, so down on the bottom it is, because I, I, it says okay. how I personally appear okay. before you. There's a couple of them, I think the yellow tabs, you just sign it. Well, we haven't voted it yet. No, either. we haven't. Right. Well, you okay. Let us borrow the document. You want to borrow, borrow the document first? Okay. I just want to see what we're signing sign up yeah. for. Which, I, I promise I'll speed read. Because I used to, uh, mm -hmm. I remember I used to notarize a lot of those when I was in the town yeah. clerk's office. Okay, so this is really just a procedural correction yeah. Yeah. to yeah. activity that we had already done related to um, this this grant work. Okay, from long ago. You. That's all. Right. Yes. So, motion to approve. Yes, motion to approve. Um, we have a second. Aye. 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 Yes. Aye. Sign with the yellow tabs, Karen. I don't see anything here to sign. Yeah, way down. Yeah, Just sign this one. And And then you'll know to rise that one. Okay. Next are the special use permits. And this is again for the lake associated to you South Pond and Quaybog Pond. And I would like a motion. Motion to, to sign. To sign all of these. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, the event for this is 426 2020. It's for South Pond and it's called Ice Hole. Yeah, it's the same way. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And this event is 5-9-2020 on Quaybog Pond. And this is the Pioneer Valley Bass Anglers. The next one is 5-29-2020 on Quaybog Pond, the Mass Bass Nation. And this is from 6-14-2020 on South Pond. It's the Chicopee Bath Association. And that's it. And the next one is... Um, This is for the liquor licenses. You're not in here. Oh, I know what happened. <laughs> People always put them up for something. Or we put them over here. We're both looking at them. Okay, the here they time. are right yeah. here. I see them. <laughs> okay, now we have to sign the uh, 2020 liquor licenses. So why don't you just list who they are? I'll, I will tell who they are. Okay. This one is for... Um, Central Street Package Store. Yep. Keep going. That's all. Oh, right. they're all separate. Okay, the next one is for the Brookfield Rod and Gun Club. 
Uh, then another, uh, then the next one is for um, retail package store. Oh, this is Bay Path Spirits. Uh, another one for Oak Home Brewing Company, LLC. And that should be it. And that's it. And so motion to sign. Motion to sign. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Try to come in the in the one of the December meetings so that he doesn't have a lapse. Well, we talked about that, and in all honesty, I mean, the, the ABCC told me that he has to let it lapse and then restart it yeah. again. But I have another establishment too that wants to apply, so I think what we'll do is probably do two two hearings the same night. So we're doing back okay. back. Okay. Now under other, we have. A cemetery deed to sign. Uh -huh. Motion to sign. All in favor? Second. Aye. Aye. I should probably use your blue pen. Yeah. Thanks. What's the number on that deed window? Deed number 336. Nope. <clears throat> okay, and under correspondence, we have here something from Chatter again. Okay, we're uh, we're going to have more services uh, from different channels on December seventeenth, twenty nineteen. We're going to have Acorn TV, Shutter, Urban Moving. Urban Movie Channel, Sundance Now, and AMC Premier. And if anybody has any questions, they can call John Maha at 774 243 9735. One thing a little bit late under other, um, and this was because I wasn't clear over the phone uh, as I was listening before. The question that I had is, is do we want to, since we've, we've had such a, a long road to hoe with the financial procedure book, um, one of the processes that they use in like aerospace, right, is to have like a primary manual that has high level policy guidelines, mm -hmm. but then the individual policies are discrete and individually approved. And I'm wondering if what we need to do is take a look at the stuff that we already have agreements on, go ahead and sign those into being as discrete policies mm -hmm. that fall under the overall manual. And then, you know, as we get the other pieces put into place then at least like for stuff like the the whole like when you get a new employee where does that person need to go and who needs to be checked in with could be like established now I mean that's something that we don't necessarily need like that larger concurrence on all the different financial procedures in order to get into place and then have it under the umbrella of a more like higher level policy book yeah so because so. because I have a couple of days coming up where I could take some time off that I need to burn. So if people would be willing to meet with me sometime in December, um, I'd be willing to take that piece of it on so, if you're interested. So just back to my work experience. Yeah. 
putting ISO 9000 documents together. Right, right. We're talking the same language. We are, yeah. So, so looking at the financial policy document that we have today, it's all encompassing. It's what it is. What was brought up earlier this evening were some things as to what I would what I would consider work instructions. Okay. And and so what mm -hmm. I think what's going to happen is we can get the document locked the way it is. Mm -hmm. Get that between now and the audit. Mm -hmm. It's that's what it is. In the meantime, as we touch this thing, we're going to find areas where there need we to be need to work instructions. instructions. And so what we do is we now, not in that, that document, but the next set of documents, you'll then create yep. the work instructions. The hierarchy and, of and I instructions. believe the management letter is going to tell us yeah, that we need a hierarchy of yep. documents. Right. And so I think, I think if we can lock in the document as to the way we believe we're working today, we then take a minute and take a deep breath and see what the audit finding management letter suggests. We'll find the things that were suggested to us this evening and we apply those. So I, since it's my turn to do it, I have typically in town, we've had more <coughs> success doing it the way that Beth just said. We do a financial procedures manual and then we do separate financial policies because of generally how long this takes to redo and update and whatnot, we, uh, when I just did this round in another town, we did like four policies, got them approved, got them posted, and into effect. We did the procedures manual and had it in line with every policy, which is kind of how I was doing it here, except I was trying to rip apart each policy that I had spent all this time doing in another town and trying to dump it back into your policies and procedures book. Mm -hmm. I personally think it works better if you have a procedures book and then separate policies that are standalone because then if you need to find a policy that needs to be updated, you can update that standalone policy. Um, work that needs to get done. I can have more of those done a lot quicker than three weeks because I'm not trying to update a whole manual rather than I have separate so, policies. So if the chair would agree yeah, between I, Beth and I, mm -hmm. We will work with Lori oh, and, and sure, the other departments, and maybe we can. <laughs> we can. Yeah, yes, <laughs> you do. Um, you got to manage the other. Yeah. 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 So if we can get to get get together um, to break the document yeah. up. Exactly. We, within the uh, constraints one, one of open yeah. meeting. Yeah. Open meeting. And then an, and then another thing that I would like to get on the policy. Um, I would like to have um, a policy on signing wage authorizations. Sure. Yeah, just like it. That's and, we need and, and my thought is, is yeah. we could do it visually and as a flow map because one mm -hmm. of the things I've seen work in a lot of because we're really like a small small business, yeah. right? Because mm -hmm. it's it's not like we've got yeah. like a hundred. Yeah. I mean, we have including the school yeah. hundred people working for the town, but when it comes to functionally, yeah. on the municipal side, mm -hmm. we're only talking a few people. Yeah. I, f I find it like the turtle diagram, like flow map type thing that just says like here's step one, here's step two, this is where you go. Yeah. And, and not a lot of words yeah. we can be done with it have the yeah. have the, yeah. the infographic mm -hmm. for everybody and it'll make yeah. things go a lot easier there there so. was there was a policy on um, wage authorizations and I looked through the policy book and I couldn't find anything. right so, so and a lot of those are mm -hmm. not I mean they're financially related but they're more like kind of Interdepartment procedural yeah. sort yes. of stuff. I understand and, that, yeah. And so that's yeah. that's what I was hoping to, yeah. to help out with. Okay. So. Yep. That's so. good. I approve. Jeff? Just a point of clarification or education for me the previous audit, which was in 14. FY, half of FY 14. Okay, so there were findings from that one, and I would assume that would be the base of whatever the people coming in to look, to look at. Well, the only reason, well, the only reason that we ha actually had that one was because we had had a theft, and he only just focused on the theft. We didn't get a management letter. So with that, I motion to adjourn. Maureen? Oh. I'm sorry, I wasn't here for all the meetings, so I'd like you to be repeating the question you might have already answered. Um, but seeing as how you're going over all these policies and procedures, um, do we currently have a harassment policy in place? Yes, we yes. do. And who would be the... Well, the treasurer was, so we'll have to name somebody new now. We'll have to put it out. Do we have a male and a female vote? 
We just had a female. We no, should have no, a male we, and a female. We, no, we have a male. No, not the. I don't know if any male. Who? I don't know. No, we didn't have a male. But we had a female. So let's take it under yeah, advisement. We'll, we'll take it under advisement. We'll keep, bring it up at our next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Are you volunteering? <laughs> <laughs> Motion to adjourn at, at 747. I don't think any All in Second. favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.